Hey everyone, this is part two of how to design and spatially control lattice structures and gyroids within the NTOP platform. My name is Gabrielle Phelan and I'm on the application engineering team. In this video, I will first show you a real world application of this concept and then I will move into a step-by-step -step instruction and in how you can do this yourself. I will show you how you can alter various parameters of your design using the ramp block such as the wall thickness of your part. Now let's jump into the software. Before I get into the how-to portion of this video, I just wanted to provide a visual and real-world application of what we will be covering. If you saw part one of this series, this pressure vessel will look familiar. In part one, I focused on the varying of the periodicity of the interior of this pressure vessel, which was enabled by the ramp block. In this part, I'll focus on how I was able to vary the wall thickness of this vessel. Essentially, I was able to do this to my part with the concept of field-driven design in a block with an NTOP platform called the ramp block. In this example, I was able to vary the wall thickness based on pressure values, which was enabled by utilizing this ramp block that I named wall thickness ramp, and also this pressure map, which can be visualized. In this case, high pressure values in red correlate to thicker gyroid walls. So let's start off with a simple example to introduce this idea. All right, so to just intro this whole idea of the ramp block, we're gonna do a simple step-by-step -step example here. Um, first, just gonna grab a cube within our Create tab, and then I'm going to navigate to the lattices tab in which I'm going to grab the wall TPMS block. So just by dragging my cube here into the body input, we're just going to generate a gyroid structure by going to the fill type, first one in the drop down menu, and there we have our gyroid structure. So if you look into the approximate thickness parameter, we have a uniform thickness of 0.25 millimeters. To the left of this input here you see this icon this kind of this field icon essentially this is kind of like an all ticket pass to start using um, or start incorporating like spatially varying structures or parameters here and to do so we're going to use the ramp block so if i go into our math tab here all the way to the right utilities drop down menu we have a block called ramp and you see when I select the ramp block, we have icons that match the icon to the left here of approximate thickness. All right, so now we're going to start filling in these inputs, the first being the scalar field input. Essentially what this is is kind of like um, our modifier. How do we want to vary our structure? Is our, our modifier going to be simulation results? Or let's just use like um, a plane. So it could be as simple as bringing in um, a, a plane or a sphere and dragging around our structure here to vary our structure. So as you can see, we have our plane here. It's at the middle here. I'm just going to drag this down to the bottom of our structure. So now our plane's at the bottom here. And now we're going to move into filling in the rest of these parameters. So we have in min, in max, out min, and out max. And I'm just going to open up the properties of this block here to get and go to the information panel here to kind of give you more of an idea of what each of these values mean. So for in min, we're basically saying, okay, based on this plane, so let's say zero millimeters away from this plane, let's designate what we want our output to be. So let's say zero millimeters away from this plane, let's do an approximate thickness of 0.25 millimeters. And as soon as you see, I tip, type in millimeters, units will get propagated to the right side. Now let's go to our out in max. So basically what's, what's our, our output range and our min clamp value gonna be? So in this case, our cube is 10 millimeters um, large here. So let's say up to 10 millimeters here. And then let's designate an output, um, our max output. So basically, what, what do we want our um, 
other clamp value to be. So zero millimeters away, let's do 0.25 millimeters. As we move a further away from this plane, up to 10 millimeters, let's maybe move to um, a value of one millimeter thickness. And then within continuity, we're just gonna select geometric. Essentially, we're just kind of um, selecting the smoothness of this ramp, how we're gonna like inter linearly interpolate these values or linearly map these values. So once we do that, our block is set. We can make it a variable. Again, best practices here. And I'm just gonna rename it thickness modifier. So now, once I drag this variable into our approximate thickness, you'll see that our structure updated. It's a little aggressive here towards the top, but now we can start iterating different values here to start varying how our structure responds. And now you can see we're obviously varying the thickness here. And I could have used the same logic between in the approximate bias length parameter here. Again, you see this field icon saying, okay, we can start spatially varying this parameter within our geometry. So that was a simple example of um, using something as simple as a plane, we can apply the same concept, the same setup, using simulation results. So in the pressure vessel you saw the pressure map. Let's move to an example using, um, again, what the simulation results. So here we have another setup. I, in this case, we did a simple static analysis within NTOP. We get our static analysis output here. Um, using stress values, and then we're getting our final part. And if I do a section cut of our final part, you see we have a gyroid infill here um, with varying uh, wall thickness of our gyroid. And in a similar fashion, I'm able to do this using the ramp block. And so you see I have a, va uh, a variable here called thickness modifier. You see it's a ramp block. If I open it up, pretty much a similar setup, except this time I'm using a stress map. And so there's a couple steps before you can use the stress map as your scalar field input. Essentially, first we just extract the stress map from our analysis results. And we're collecting it as a point map. We're then taking that point map and converting it to a field. So we're getting it into that, that field icon. And now once it's a field, it's just a matter of filling in these other values. So in the other case, our in, min, and in max were values of millimeters, but since our input, our scalar field input is a stress map, which is coming in values of Pascal's, you can see that the units reflect that. So we're saying at a minimum stress value of looks like close to 22,000 Pascal's, let's do um, an output gyroid thickness of one millimeter and then in a higher Pascal value, um, we're going to have our max gyroid thickness be 5 millimeters. Again, continuity is just geometric, but similar setup in doing so, we can now vary um, our gyroid structure. So by being able to apply this concept of field-driven design enabled by the ramp block to these structures, you'll be able to have complete control of your geometry. Furthermore, delivering products which meet performance requirements. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in a demo, please visit entopology.com to request a demo. For more content, please sign up for our newsletter and check our LinkedIn on a regular basis. Thank you for watching.